Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. The court of the Crown Prince announced that His Royal Highness uh, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa will conduct an official visit to the United States of America. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad uh, will meet uh, with several senior U.S. officials and will review long-standing Bahrain-U.S. relations and ways to further bolster cooperation across various fields. The Council of the Representatives held its weekly meeting chaired by its speaker, Fawziya Zainal. The meeting approved a decree by law regarding foreign financial editors. The Council also approved a draft law regarding the Representatives Council's bylaws. The Council then approved a draft resolution regarding the Shura and Representatives Councils. Bahrain participated virtually in the high-level meeting of the Human Rights Council in Geneva. In his speech, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelatif bin Rashid Zayani, reviewed Bahrain's efforts to promote and protect human rights within the framework of the comprehensive reform approach led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He highlighted the Kingdom's efforts in supporting peace in the region and the world, maintaining international security, developing international relations and achieving international cooperation. The efforts are guided by the UN Charter and relevant international and regional conventions based on His Majesty's approach, which calls for promoting tolerance, peaceful coexistence, brotherhood, cooperation and peace among the people of the world. The minister stressed that following the directives of His Majesty the King, the government of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, focused on addressing the pandemic in a constructive and effective manner, taking into account all health, economic, social and educational aspects. The minister affirmed that Bahrain's constant efforts to develop the human rights system has advanced steps in the field of care and support for human needs. The minister stressed uh, that the government was able to include 78% of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in the Government Plan 2019-2022 and the National Plan to implement Bahrain's Vision 2030. The minister affirmed uh, that the government has continued its efforts in developing the legislative system related to enhancing the protection of human rights with a law on alternative sentences and uh, measures being issued in 2017 and amended in 2021. He also underscored that the government has given great care to the rights of the children and in 2021 a law was issued on restorative justice for children and protecting them from ill treatment. The minister stressed that Bahrain continued its great progress in combating trafficking in persons. It was designated for the fourth consecutive year within a tier one in the annual report of the U.S. State Department on Trafficking in Persons. As Zayani underscored that efforts to support uh, the empowerment of women in Bahrain have witnessed a qualitative leap that began two decades ago with the establishment of the Supreme Council for Women, which developed national policies and qualitative plans to enhance women's rights. The minister added that believing in the importance of cooperation with the mechanisms of the Human Rights Council Council and treaty bodies concerned with human rights, Bahrain continued its positive cooperation with these mechanisms and bodies. He added that the government of Bahrain translated the principles into the National Action Charter and the Constitution by preparing the plan of the National Committee for Human Rights in cooperation with all stakeholders. He noted that in order to reach the highest levels of quality, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs signed a declaration of intent with the Office of the Resident Co Coordinator of the UN Activities in Bahrain to advise on the preparations of the National Human Rights Plan. The second strategic dialogue between Bahrain and the U.S. began virtually yesterday. The Bahraini side was chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelatif Zayani, whereas the U.S. side was chaired by the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. The Minister of Foreign Affairs delivered a speech where he affirmed that with the two countries celebrating 50 years of formal diplomatic relations last year and with over a century of deep-rooted bilateral cooperation across a range of sectors, the partnership between Bahrain and the U.S. is one of unique strategic attributes and advantages, adding that it is a partnership based on mutual respect, shared priorities and common values, which reflected in the collective efforts to uphold the security and stability of the Gulf and the Middle East through the work of the U.S. Fifth Fleet, 
the maritime security construct and the swift and effective coordination in the Afghan evacuation operations. He added that such cooperation is also reflected in the country's ongoing efforts to combat terrorism and those who fund, incite or glorify acts of terror, as well as their joint work to build on the historic Abraham Accords in order to spread peace, coexistence, interdependence and prosperity across the Middle East. The minister further underscored that both sides are keen to explore opportunities for further economic and a trade cooperation, building on the strong foundations of their bilateral free trade agreement, noting in this regard that laying the foundation for the U.S. trade zone in Bahrain Salman Industrial City is one example for such cooperation. He added that the kingdom in the field of environment and climate change looks forward to working with the U.S. in developing Bahrain's institutional capabilities to meet its 2060 net zero target and to deepen cooperation in the areas of energy, technology and scientific exchange across the board. The minister stressed that the kingdom is determined to uphold the highest standards in the field of human rights and looks forward to benefiting from U.S. expertise in implementing the international best practices, adding that Bahrain continues to demonstrate this commitment through its work to counter human trafficking, underlining the kingdom's pride of its tier one status in the State Department's annual TIP report. He further affirmed his confidence that the strategic dialogue will help the two countries to further expand and deepen those ties, develop academic cooperation and exchange, and build a broader cultural cooperation to raise awareness of history and heritage in both countries. The minister underscored that the, this strategic dialogue is also an important opportunity to review and assess regional and international developments, emphasizing their shared perspectives and exchanging insights on the way forward. He noted in this regard the threat to regional stability posed by the proliferation of missile and drone technology, an issue on which a greater international coordination is essential. Welcoming the opportunity to explore the possibility of, for example, further international measures, such as the Security Council resolutions to control and prevent the spread of such technologies. He underlined that a sustainable peace in Yemen can only be achieved through a comprehensive political solution ending the suffering of the Yemeni people and removing a source of significant regional destabilization. Adding that in this context, both countries agree that the Houthi militia's drone and missile attacks on civilian facilities is unacceptable and constitutes acts of terror that need serious consideration at an international level to designate the Houthis as a terrorist organization. He added that the agenda for this strategic dialogue underlines the breadth and depth of the two countries' long-standing and effective bilateral partnership. Secretary Blinken then expressed his pride in the historical relations between the U.S. and Bahrain, noting that the two countries, in addition to their celebration of the 50th anniversary of the establishment of relations, will celebrate this year the 20th anniversary of the designation of Bahrain as a major non-NATO ally of the U.S. He also underlined that the U.S. appreciates its partnership with Bahrain in the field of maintaining security and stability in the region. Secretary Blinken also expressed his aspirations that the coming days will bear fruit through the four working groups that will focus on discussing means to strengthen cooperation in various fields, including security, trade, cultural and other important fields. This will resolve or revolve between representatives of the U.S. State Department and relevant U.S. agencies as well as their Bahraini counterparts, stressing the importance of building on the solid bilateral relations between the two countries to benefit the people of the two countries and the security and stability of the region. The 1st of March of each year coincides with the Gulf Day for Healthy Cities, which came by a decision of the Ministers of Health of the GCC, where its activities will be held this year under the theme Healthy Cities for Sustainable Development. The celebration comes within the framework of the implementation of the Health Minister's Action Plan 2022-2026, which includes a number of joint programs and projects that mainly aim to enhance cooperation and integration among the GCC states in the health field, including discussing the Gulf strategic plan for the Healthy Cities program, in addition to programs and events organized on this occasion. The interest in healthy cities at the Gulf level comes to embody one of the most important preventative programs of the World Health Organization, which aims to primarily to promote and protect the health of the population through sustainable development. 
The Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs branch in Mecca region, Mazen Mohamed Al Himali, has received uh, the Consular Acquittal of uh, the Consul General of Bahrain in Jeddah, Musa Abdullah Salam Al Naimi. Mazen Mohamed Al Himali has welcomed uh, the Consul General praising the well established brotherly relations between uh, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, wishing him continued success in his new diplomatic duties. In turn, the Consul General valued the close historical relations that unite Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, stressing his keenness to do his utmost to perform his duties to the fullest, wishing Saudi Arabia continued strength and prosperity. The Kingdom of Bahrain welcomes the decision of the UN Security Council to renew sanctions on Yemen, designating the Houthis for the first time as a terrorist group and including them in the Yemen sanctions list as well as imposing an arms embargo on Yemen as issued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Ministry commended the Security Council's decision which represents an important step that would contribute to limiting the capabilities of the terrorist Houthi militia and their hostile attacks on civilians and civilian infrastructures in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates in preventing the Houthi these continuous attacks on commercial ships and their threat to shipping lines and global trade. It affirmed Bahrain's support for Saudi Arabia's efforts to reach a political solution for the Yemeni crisis that would end the suffering of the brotherly Yemeni people. The National Programme for Employment achieved a tremendous success in its second edition, employing 26,000 Bahraini and training 12,000 others. More on this report. Following the government's interest to recruit Bahrainis into the labor market, the cabinet approved in early 2021 the launch of the second edition of the National Employment Program after achieving success in the first edition, where a budget of 120 million Bahraini dinars was allocated to support employment and training over a period of three years by the labor fund Temkin. The program encouraged the employment of Bahrainis in the private sector establishments and increased the attraction of job seekers to benefit from the program by having job or training opportunities. The registration of job seekers was facilitated through launching awareness campaigns that encouraged and attracted national job seekers to register through launching an electronic system with their updated data and an accurate database. The program was also keen to pay attention to several aspects by activating remote work and part-time work for females and developing a permanent electronic employment event by creating an electronic system that allows employers to present their vacancies while imposing Bahrainization rates on private sector establishments. With regards to the training aspect, a series of training courses have been launched to train job seekers in coordination with training institutes and Temkin, in addition to the training program Fursa, followed by training programs with guaranteed employment. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,230,889 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,211,359 had taken the second, and 694,004 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 25,648 with 2,776 recoveries and 2,577 registered new cases. There are 51 active cases receiving treatment and 16 patients in critical condition. Bahrain has recorded 1,454 total deaths while 487,781 have recovered from the virus. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. Thank you.